Well, hello and welcome to our webcast, Revit for Interior Designers and Design Options Made Easy for Everyone. I'm pleased to have Sharice with us today, who's presenting this, and Sharice, I'll pass things over to you. All right, thank you. So I am so excited to be uh, presenting this new Revit Fundamentals for Interior Design Learning Guide to you guys. Very excited. It's been in the works for quite some time. And I had some amazing, amazing women help me put this all together. Um, so a, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm the learning content developer with Ascent. I develop and maintain all of the Revit guides. Before this, I was in uh, bid management consulting, supporting both small and large firms, get their software set up and help them establish a workflow. And then for over about 19 years, I have been working with training and supporting a variety of Autodesk software from Revit, AutoCAD, AutoCAD Architecture and MEP, Advanced Still, Navisworks, and the Autodesk Cloud Services. So let's take a look at what we'll be talking about today. So in this webcast, I'm going to be using both PowerPoint presentation and pre-recorded videos for the demos. I'm going to talk about why we created an interior design specific learning guide and briefly cover what is within that within the learning guide. I'm going to talk about some of the interior design specific content focusing on design options, but also the supporting chapters that help build the design options. And then I'll be demonstrating how to create a custom material, create a group, and then how to create design options. And then at the end, we'll open it up for some Q&A. So similar to our other discipline specific guides like the architectural, structural, the MEP, and landscape, as well as residential Revit learning guides, I created the interior design specific learning guide to address the learning needs of interior designers and the additional details they need to include in their project. So this book moves through three sections detailing different aspects of designing in Revit. The first section discusses uh, the Revit tools and project setup, the interface and how to navigate around the in 2D and 3D views. The design development section focuses on teaching you how to use the tools to create your 3D models and, and elements as well as enhancing the views. And then the third section of this guide covers construction documentation, which teaches you the tools to create accurate construction documents for your designs like dimensioning, text, schedules, and details. So some of um, the unique learning content in this guide is in chapter five, which is the materials and material libraries. This chapter is my favorite. <laughs> Okay, there's no favorites here. This chapter includes in-depth information about the Revit materials because they are so crucial to the design intent as well as in the presentations. In this chapter, you will learn how to create materials and the details in which you can modify them, like adding assets, modifying their graphical representation, learn about the material editor panel and how to apply materials to elements. The elements or the materials do not stop in chapter five because the materials you create in this chapter will be used in chapter 14, which is rendering, where you'll be using those custom materials as like a backsplash or flooring. And so I want to demonstrate for you um, right now a, uh, partial of practice 5a creating a material and then a partial of 14a which is applying it to a surface within Revit. So here I want to um, 
create a material and I want to create this material so that I can apply it as a backsplash. So within Revit, if I come up here to the manage tab and I open the material browser dialog box, I can look through the various materials and see if there's any that I can duplicate and simply just swap out what the appearance is going to be or I can create brand new materials. So that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna create a new material and I definitely need to rename this to be more specific to what I want to use it to or apply it to. I want to change that appearance. So right now it's just a gray color, which is generic. So in the assets browser, I can choose from any of these folders that you see over on the left. So here you see the Autodesk physical asset and the appearance library. So the difference between the physical asset, well, there, there's no difference. The physical asset is typically used in um, structural analysis. So the materials, information, the properties inside that material is typically used for structural analysis. The appearance library is all these materials that you see here. They are, if it's metallic paint, it is going to display as metallic paint when it renders. Um, right now I'm gonna look for a mosaic. I can certainly go through each of these categories, looking for what I want to use. But the quickest way right now is just to do a search and look for a mosaic. It now searches all the folders and subcategories in here. So I'm just left with mosaics. So the one I want, so I'm going to click to add it as an asset to this material. And I can pull it away and just see if it's correct and I'm right. And on the graphics tab, I want it to use render appearance and that's just gonna help me in a realistic view, see what I've got. So now I wanna split the face and this is also taught in chapter 14. I'm going to split the surface of the wall. Now I'm not splitting the wall. So now I have two pieces of wall. I'm simply splitting it so I can apply the material. So from the paint tool, I'm going to pull in my new material that we just created. And I can even modify this um, split surface. I can drag it up to the top of the cupboard. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why are we tiling behind the cupboards and the fridge? But um, this is just for representation so I can present it to a presentation, even do a rendering. And it's, it's there. If I'm, the book goes into how to further calculate this into schedules. Another important chapter in this guide is chapter seven, learning how to create groups. So groups, if created and managed properly, can radically change your design process and workflow. So placing Revit components one by one is time consuming and can lead to issues when copying or moving them, you can ac accidentally click a floor. So by, by creating groups, you can quickly access those groups from the ribbon or from the project browser and then place them throughout the model. And I'm not having to select the individual objects. I can then, if I have other groups in the model, I can quickly change so this rectangle to, down to a 36 inch. So going from 60 to 36, 
if I'm doing it with individual objects, I have to select them one by one, modify the property, um, remove things that don't belong, and now I have to like reposition things. So groups are amazing if you've got them put together correctly. Um, and just one thing about placing individual objects, it's time consuming and it, it does lead to loss of productivity. So now I wanna demonstrate um, adding or actually creating a group as well as the different, um, there's some other material in the lecture part that I wanna just cover in this demo as well. So here we have a table and chair. And what I want to do is I want this chair to be, a, I want chairs around the table. So what I'm gonna do is select the chair and I'm going to array it around the table. I know I want four chairs. And then I need to change the center of rotation because right now it wants to rotate around the chair. So I'm gonna pick the center of the table and then my pick point, and I want it to go around in a 360 axis. So now I have my chairs and I have my table. So from here, I want to create a group out of this. So I'm gonna select the objects and of course, making sure I haven't selected anything else. And then that group, the name naming convention, I want it to be, it's a 36 inch table with four chairs. I want to be able to know that when I go place another group of this, I know exactly what it is. So as you can see, I just have this one group in here, but I can quickly load it, place it, and I'm not dealing with individual elements. So some other features with groups is in the project browser here under groups and under model, you see my group. So what I can do is save that group out, and I'm gonna save it in my company's folder. That way I can use it on other projects. I'm gonna make sure I, I have this similar naming convention, or I could keep the existing, but I'd go with the same one. And I can also load in other custom groups that have been created. So back in my company groups folder, and I'm gonna bring in this, 30 inch table with two chairs. And I can start the place model group command, or I can come over to project browser and just drag it in and start placing it. So one thing about groups when they're created is you can attach details to them. So here, this one has a boundary or a clearance. So if this is set and I need to make sure everything's spaced correctly, I turn that detail on, and then I can place these groups around the room knowing they're spaced correctly and they're not sitting on top of each other, or I'm gonna miscount how many tables and chairs that I need. And chapter 12, this one you'll learn about the Revit design options. Um, so design options aids in creating different design ideas in the project that can be presented to customers or stakeholders. And then once the design is selected by them, you'll learn how to make that design option the primary in your design. So let's uh, flip over to my demo here where I will demonstrate uh, practice 12A from the guide, which is creating design options in the restaurant, um, dining area, and kitchen area. So here we are, I'm in an enlarged restaurant plan view, 
And what I want to do is create a design option in the dining area here. And then I want to create another design option in the kitchen area. So we can have what is existing in here, but we can also change it up a bit using uh, design options. And my cursor just froze. Okay, back, we're back, we're back. <laughs> so I can access design options from the manage tab on the ribbon or from the status bar. You, you will have the same options in both places. So what I'm gonna do is create an option set and think of option sets as a particular area. So I'm doing the restaurant dining furniture and I'm going to establish two separate options. So I'm doing a furniture layout one and a furniture layout two for this area. And now I wanna create another option set. And this set is of the kitchen. So um, this is going to be, again, a kitchen layout one, and then we'll do another one that's kitchen layout two. So I do have existing elements in here, and I'm gonna utilize what's already in the model to create different layouts. So right now I have groups, I have individual elements in here, and what I need to do is get it inside those design options. So I'm going to select these objects that I want, you can see I've picked on some other things I don't need, like curtain walls. So I'm going to filter those out. And now that I have them all selected, I can come um, down here to the status bar and click Add to Set. Or from the Manage tab, I can click the Add to Set. So making sure it's restaurant furniture and both layouts are selected because I don't want to have to redo this the second layout. I want to utilize the objects. So it's essentially copied into both, um, both options. So again, in the kitchen, I'm going to filter out what I want and then add it to the kitchen set. So clicking on add to set, I'm going to switch this to kitchen. Both layouts are selected. And now I'm ready to edit. So we're going to start with the dining area. And to go into edit mode, I'm going to click layout furniture two. You can see that everything's grayed out except those elements that I added to this design set, or excuse me, design um, option. And it is in the set. So here I can delete, I can add um, different furnitures. I could add a, a bar setup or more booths. I can copy multiple times these objects that are already in here. And the one thing to keep in mind is I am not deleting these objects from the other. So this is furniture layout two, I am not deleting anything from furniture layout one. I am custom customizing layout two. So just so hopefully that helps you to understand what's happening here. Um, I can actually come down here in the project browser and load a group that's already in this project. And as you can see, I don't have to individually rotate those objects. I can rotate the group and move it into place. And let's see, this looks uh, pretty good. Maybe just move um, these a little bit further up. And then we're pretty much done. 
So now let's work on the kitchen. So to get out of layout two um, for the dining area, I'm gonna select on kitchen layout two. And here you can see those objects in the kitchen I can select on, I can manipulate. Everything else is grayed out. And that's how you know you're in edit mode is objects are grayed out or you can't touch them or select on them. And again, I can add extra elements in here. I could add a range, a sink would be very nice and helpful in this situation. <laughs> um, but right clicking on these elements and creating similar helps me to quickly just place the objects I need. I know more, more thought should go into this, but for the demonstration, um, in the practice, there's obviously more options to choose from, but just quickly throwing some stuff in here. So now to end the edit mode, I set myself to main model. Notice, I mean, you can't see me clicking, but I cannot click on any of those objects. See, right now I'm hovering over the floor. I could easily select the floor right now, but any of the other stuff I can't. So now what I want to do is create views of the different design options. So I'm going to duplicate this enlarge restaurant plan view. And then I'm going to change how the view is displayed. So I'm going to make these views show the different design options. One thing to know that the options in your design option sets, the ones that, are, that say primary are always going to be the automatic design option in the view. So any new view that you create, it is always going to show that layout one. So if, if you recall, the furniture in the dining area and the elements in the kitchen, these are all what I assigned to layout one or was the original basically. So now how I manipulate the view is through Revit's visibility um, graphics and overrides. And on the design option tab, I can pick what the dining room layout's gonna be and the kitchen. So here for design option one, I'm just gonna keep it layout one. So they're both gonna show layout one. Now I don't have to change that because primary is automatically those layout ones, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real here and do um, option one is layout ones, option two is layout twos, and then for the design option three, I'm going to have a mix. So for the dining area, I'm going to use layout two. And for the kitchen, I'm going to do layout one. So that's great. I have planned views in place, but now I need like a 3D representation of this. So what we can do is create a 3D view, but orient it to the enlarged floor plan. So at, at the, as you can see, I can rotate and I can actually see the elements now, the actual 3D elements. I'm going to turn off the architect's model and I'm going to turn off that section um, area just so I can see it it's a little cleaner. And then what I want to do is obviously rename it because I don't want the default 3D view to be this view. So I'm going to rename it. And then I'm going to do what I did before, which is duplicating the existing 3D view. And then of course, changing the view so that it shows the option that I want. Now I could easily do another 3D view and rotate it to the different options. As you noticed, it doesn't matter. It's always going to have an automatic. So duplicating it this way is just quicker because I can change the name. 
I have removed the architect's model and turned off some things. So why do that three times? So I'm, I'm going to make the view look the way I want and then duplicate it and then set these design options to show what I want to show. So now that's done. One, you can, you can place these on a sheet presented or what you could do is right click on the view in the project browser here and there is an option to save to project. Now you have to have the view activated in order to make that image. So clicking on save project to image. And then of course you'll give it a name, preferably specific to the design option. And then below you can modify the image size, the zoom, um, the raster image quality. So I'm thinking 150 should be good enough, um, but you can definitely play with those different settings. So in the re renderings um, portion of the design browser, <laughs> I'm making words up now, in the project browser is that image. It is in the project, I can um, put it on sheets and do whatever. So from here, now that it's presented, we can actually look at making the customer or the stakeholders option that they chose the main design layout. So here in the design option dialog box, um, we're going to pick furniture layout two and make that primary because that's we're we're gonna just assume that that's what they selected. And when I do accept primary, it wants to delete any views that it that was in that that set was in. So you want to make sure that the one that is selected is truly the one that they wanted. So again, I accept the primary and it's gonna delete out any views that were created with that set. So in the project browser, you can see that my design option two is the only one left because that's the one we chose the layout. It held the two layouts for both dining and kitchen. And that concludes this webcast on our new Revit's uh, fundamental for interior design. So just a recap, we talked about why we created um, this learning guide. We talked about what was in the book and the unique features related to interior design. I demonstrated how to create um, a custom material and how to create a group and how to create design options. So I just wanna thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch this webcast and I hope you have a great rest of your day.